GSXR 750 track stroke road bike build. Now, you guys who watched the first episode will have noticed that basically the bike didn't have a front end. And the reason for that is because we've gone with aftermarket suspension for both the front and the rear. Firstly, we're gonna get into fitting it. Um, hopefully we can do that. Um, and then I'm gonna be talking you through, you know, what I've gone with, what the various options were, why I would even consider doing aftermarket suspension in the first place, and we'll get into a bit more of the nitty gritty of that. Uh, so without further ado, we're gonna get on fitting this stuff. By the way, it is K-Tech stuff, and yeah, I mean, it looks very nice. So let's get into it. So as you can tell, and by the fact that the motorcycle is on two wheels and is not in a pile in the floor, we're now fitted with the, both the front and the rear suspension. Really enjoying this process, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining what, firstly, what would lead me to choose aftermarket suspension, what I went for, and some initial impressions about how I'm getting on with it as well. So the first thing is, why would I even consider aftermarket suspension? Well, there's a couple of reasons, to be honest. Um, the first reason is, that I love my bike. I love this GSX-R 750. I think it's fantastic. And this whole series is about making this motorcycle as good as it possibly can be. Um, but I have to say, you know, last year with some of the motorcycles that I got to test, I suppose I just had my eyes opened really, I, I, particularly with the KTM 890 Duke R, just had a phenomenal suspension setup in both the front and rear. And the way that bike rode with its setup was just fantastic. It mixed a level of plushness with firmness. It was comfortable yet handled really well. And I suppose that just opened my eyes to what a good quality suspension setup could look and feel like. And I know that there's some sport bikes out there that have got fantastic suspension setups, bikes like the R1M, like the Fireblade SP, the GSX R1000R, RSV4 Factory, there's quite a few of them. But rather than just go down that route and buy something sort of off the shelf that had a great package, I was more about wanting to make this as good as it possibly can be. Second reason is that actually once I got on track, and of course riding on track is so far removed from what you do on the road that I did start to see some holes in the setup that it, that it had. Um, and when I did start to push on, yeah, I found some issues. I mean, I, I think, you know, looking back, I can pretty much feel that the front forks were way too soft and the rear was just rock hard. And effectively what was happening, and I'll try and put in some shots to kind of show you, is that the front was just bottoming out. I'd go into some corners and it's almost, um, diving and doing that it's uh, like almost chattering a little bit because it's bottoming out and the rear wheel would be like six inches off the floor i'd just be doing a rolling stoppy um, into the braking area which is obviously not great for your confidence going in on one wheel you don't want to be doing that 
and if it wasn't doing a roll in stoppy it certainly it was squirming everywhere as soon as I started to up the pace a little bit and I suppose I came away from that knowing that there's some areas of improvement to make with the suspension setup that I had. So I'm also one of those type of guys that just gets on a motorcycle and rides it as it is and that's basically what I've done with this GSX. So I've just rode it as I bought it. I've put new tyres on but other than that it pretty much is as is. Um, so what I did is I went on the internet um, to try and find a specialist to try and help me with this suspension um, issue. Uh, and I found TW Suspension Tech who are a dealer um, within sort of relative proximity to where we're based but he also had a huge amount of expertise and experience working alongside racers with um, suspension set up and sort of the finer details so you know a guy's got a lot of experience basically so I called him up um, explained some of the problems and was seeking a solution and uh, Toy2 is the owner um, basically came back and said that if I could afford it aftermarket suspension would give me a much better solution in the long term that I'd be able to really grow into as opposed to just making a couple of tweaks to the current setup and then at a later date up upgrading it so that's what I did effectively so what I've stumped for on the rear shock I've got a KTEC DDS light shock with uh, springs to my weight and on the front, I've got a KTEC SSK piston uh, kit and it's been resprung to my weight as well. So of course, there's loads of suspension brands out there, but I went with KTEC. Um, firstly, because they've got a really good reputation in racing and there's a lot of track day riders out there that fit KTEC suspension to their bikes and they all seem to be really happy with it. Plus, I also really like the look of the shock in particular. So, um, Call me a tart, but I like the way that it looks. Um, so I went with the KTEC DDS Light Shock, which is more or less actually the same as the DDS Pro Shock. It's just missing the remote preload adjuster um, and is a few hundred pounds cheaper than that version. But what that means basically is I've got a phenomenal shock in there. And if I so progressed and so wanted to in the future, that would take me to a really, really high level of competition. So, you know, this is a, this is a quality unit. And while it's quite expensive, when you actually lay it um, side by side from the shock that came out of it, you can tell there's a massive difference in quality in comparison to that one. It's a real beast of a unit. Um, the other thing that you'll uh, quickly see or quickly find out is that when you stick it in there, the cartridge on the side is actually too big to fit in. Um, and uh, after a bit of a panic and a, and, and, a, and a few calls later, we actually found that no, it, it is too wide and it gets in the way of the rear brake reservoir so we'll have to be removing this as part of the job and um, we've got like a rear brake reservoir delete uh, kit which is effectively a pipe that a lot of the racers use but I'll put the link in the description for the one that I've bought. So on the front forks while I did have the option to go with the KTEC RDS system which is effectively you replace the whole of the fork internals and just leave the outside sort of stanchions there um, after a bit of a chat and consultation, we figured out that with a piston kit and uh, respringing with better springs to my weight, I'd receive a, a much bigger upgrade in comparison to the stock, but it would be about half the price of the KTEC RDS. So the cost for the front uh, springs, service and piston kit was 550 versus about 1055 for the RDS system. Um, effectively what that's going to give me is a, a damping system that's much more able to control the compression and rebound damping and also much higher quality springs to my weight and that should give um, a big big improvement over the stock uh, suspension setup that I had. So first impressions, well a little proviso here, I'm going to have to do a part two to this video because as much as you can try or go a bit faster on the road and stuff, you just can't replicate what you do on a track with this motorcycle to what you can do on the road. You know, there's no way I'm, I'm going to be re repeating those feelings of 
really hard straights into very, very hard braking zones, full, full lean and then back on the gas really, really hard. You're just not going to do that on the road. It's winter, it's raining and so on. So this uh, is my first impressions on the road, mostly in the wet, but you know, I've sought out uh, fast roads. I've, I've done some hard braking zones. I've done a few stoppies. I've hit, uh, and I've sought out uh, bumps and potholes, which we've got loads of them in the UK at the moment. So I've sought those out. Um, there'll be a part two, which is more track based, but this is my initial impressions on the UK road in the winter. So another quick proviso is that we did get the suspension with a good base setting. Obviously TW Suspensions Tech had a lot of data on this bike and they set it up as best as they could. And actually the rear was pretty much perfect. The front needed a couple of tweaks and I think we're about there in terms of sag numbers and stuff. Um, once everything opens up via uh, after COVID restrictions have been lifted, there might be a few extra tweaks that we want to make um, that, that I'll get them to do. But we're starting off with a really good uh, setting, I think. So what are my first impressions? Well, you get on the bike, you start riding it down the road. Initially, it feels quite firm and quite sporty. And, you know, just out of the office car park, I'm riding it and so on. And all of a sudden, this massive pothole uh, appears out of nowhere, six inches, four, I can't remember how big it was. And I just whacked into it and prepared myself for the, for the big whack in the butt that I would usually be used to with this bike or a big crash on the front. And actually, do you know what? I just sort of like thunked over it. Um, and it was quite amazing. Um, the only way I can sort of try and explain that is, or sort of liken it to another experience I've had, would be like my old Honda Civic that I had. Um, that had like really, really crashy suspension. So you'd hit stuff and, and flipping it, you knew about it. You hit a pothole, you hit a bump and it was bang really crashy so it's quite hard but then when you start to push the car a bit more um, it was dead wallowy at the same time um, you know and it just wasn't a good setup um, totally chalk and cheese to the BMW car that I've got now which sort of seems to thunk over stuff um, really controls the bumps very well but also when you start to push it harder around roundabouts and corners and stuff it's actually it's firm, it's sporty, it's ready to it's ready to go. And I'm getting some of those plush but firm experiences from this setup. And that's something that I've never had with this bike before. So we're not talking about um, it being soft. I mean, this is a GSXR 750. This is never gonna be a, a GS that just sort of floats over everything. This is a sports bike. It's meant to be aggressive, it's meant to be um, fit and, and, and ready to go hunting some other bikes but there's a degree of plushness that I've never experienced before um, with it and I think it's absolutely fantastic. The other thing that I've really noticed as well is it's a lot less weight transfer um, so when I am heavy on the brakes I'm not diving as much uh, down or into the roundabouts or into the corners um, that makes being comfortable uh, much better because I'm, I'm less further down. I'm a bit more upright, there's a little bit less weight on my wrists. And um, particularly in the wet, while I can still get the rear to squirm a little bit, um, particularly knocking it down into first gear, it's definitely not as pronounced as it was previously. And in the dry, you know, even under quite heavy braking, you're still struggling to get that rear wheel to uh, to slip out to, to, to start moving and that is a really good thing I think the front is providing a lot more uh, support than it ever had before so then mid corner there's probably quite a difference between the setup now and what I had before and while in the past I might have felt a bit front heavy um, like I was barreling into it a little bit more um, now there seems to be much more balance from front to rear and it's probably um, quite hard to explain it, but it just feels like there's a little bit more pressure even between the front and rear tire. And actually it feels like there's balance and like there's sort of light pressure on the tires, uh, but between them rather than just either on one or the other. And that feels quite good mid corner and quite confidence inspiring. 
then corner exit. Again, it's hard to explain, but it just feels tighter. Um, it doesn't feel like the rear's digging in. It just feels like it wants to go. Um, and uh, it feels like there's loads of grip there as well. And I've tried to sort of give it a right handful even in the wet as well and I'm struggling to get it to break traction so I think that, that is a really good thing and I'm excited very much to see how it is in the dry and definitely when I get it on track as well. So overall the feelings are firm, the feelings are sporty but it's got a great degree of plushness and it's lost quite a bit of its crashiness as well. And I think overall that's improved the ride quality, but I think it's also gonna improve the performance of it as well. So I hope you enjoyed this one. As I say, there'll be a follow-up to it over the next uh, couple of months when we got our first track day, which we've actually got booked. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, let us know what you think. Check out the range of products that we sell at Knox and that we make here. And we'll see you next time.